Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about the concept called resulting. This is a phenomenon that described very well in the book called Thinking in Bats that was written by Anne Duke. So if you haven't read this book, I recommend it. It's a good book. It talks about how you can make decisions when you don't have all the information. And uh, Anne Duke, who wrote this book, she was a professional poker player. And, and one of her examples is basically that when you play poker, you may have a really good hand uh, of cards and you may make a really good um, play with these cards, but you may still lose. But it doesn't mean just because you lose that you made a bad decision. It was just an outcome with, due to chance that maybe it wasn't what you wanted, but it may have been the right decision uh, for the situation you were in. And this whole concept of resulting is, is important also for material modeling. So what I want to talk about here is some of the, the traps that some people fall into when they do material model calibration and selection and how it relates to the concept of resulting. So here's uh, some experimental data. It's a polymer that was tested in uniaxial tension like this. And say you're working with this data, you're interested in this data and you uh, use M calibration here to calibrate the material model. I'm going to calibrate an elastic plastic isotropic hardening model. I'm going to have a lot of uh, little segments that I discretized this curve into. And if I run this once, we'll see that the blue curve, which is the prediction, is really good. It, it completely overlays the experimental data. So this is an example where you have a really good prediction. And you may say, because it looks so good, this must be a good model. So that's the kind of uh, resulting. You judge the value of your model based on the results of the final calibration. And this, of course, may not be the best idea. So what I will do here is I'm simply going to copy this model to clipboard. And I'm going to open up another M calibration window. I'm going to paste in this material model that we just calibrated. And I run it one more time. We'll see that, yeah, that looks really good. But what if you have a different set of input data? What if you had more information about this material, a different set of facts? And then you, you had the initial model that you calibrated. You see that this initial model is actually not very good at all. As soon as you have unloading, if you have large strain compression, etc., this model that just because it looked good with the first set of data is not a good model. So that's the trap you can fall into by just looking at the results. You may have a bias saying that this is good when in fact it wasn't so good. Um, there are other models, of course, they can predict this much better. I'm switching on to the three network model from the PolyUmod library. And this model matches the data much better. All, almost all aspects are predicted really well. Um, so, so the key that I want to emphasize here is don't judge uh, how good your model is simply by comparing it to some experimental data. You need to think very carefully about what is the experimental data you have. Is it enough data? Is it the right type of data, etc.? And then based on that, you should be able to judge if this is a good model or not. So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, write it in the comments below. Thank you.